This is Geometry Lesson 9.9, Surface Areas of Prisms and Cylinders. Now we know prisms and cylinders fall under the cylindrical solid category. And we're going to explore two formulas. We're going to explore the lateral area formula and the surface area. The reason we're exploring lateral area is because we need lateral area in order to find the surface area of our solid. Or just our of our prism or cylinder. I'm going to look at a picture here of a net. This is a triangular prism and we're going to look at how the it is made up of lateral area, so the total area of our lateral faces plus the area of our two bases. So if you'll notice that when you look at your notes for surface area that is lateral area plus 2B. Now the formula for lateral area is finding perimeter of our base. You'll notice that it says distance P around its base. So the reason for that is if you look at the the height of this rectangle here, that height wrap has to wrap around our base. So that's why we need to know the distance around the perimeter so that our rectangle can be long enough to wrap around the base. And then the height of the prism actually becomes the width of this rectangle. So that's where the lateral area formula P times H comes from. And then we find the area of our base. So if you go back to all your chapter 8 quadrilateral formulas, we can use that to find the area of this, these bases or our triangular formulas, all the different areas formulas that we studied in chapter 8. Before we get, begin using the two lateral area and surface area formulas to find the surface area of this prism, I'm going to answer a few questions first. First of all, it, it needs to find out what FB is. We can use Pythagorean theorem in order to find that. We know that 3 squared plus 4 squared is going to equal FE squared. Okay, and just for purposes of speed, I'm going to just go ahead and do the calculation of that. So the square root of 3 squared plus 4 squared is actually 5. So we know that the length of this side is 5. So when you find lateral area, as you s look down here, my formula is perimeter times height. But I want to just explore what it looks like when I just find the lateral area of all the different faces here. So I have one face, this back one here, that has a height of 4 and a width of, I'm sorry, height of 4, width of 8. So the area of that face would be 4 times 8, which equals 32. Then I have um, this side here that has the width of 8 and that height here of 5. So 5 times 8, which would be 40. And then the bottom here, which would be 3 times 8. So that gives me 24. So the total area of all of the lateral faces combined is going to be 96 units squared. Now we're going to use the formula and see how that all comes together. Our answers should match. So we're finding the perimeter. So I like to do the calculations on the side first and then I could just go ahead and plug it in my calculator or plug it into my formula. I don't even need a calculator for this problem. 3 plus 4 plus 5 gives me a perimeter of 7 plus 5 would be 12 units and the height of this prism is 8. So if we plug in our values then lateral area is going to equal 12 times 8 which in fact does equal 96 units squared. So now we're going to go over and do our surface area formula. So that was the area of all the little rectangles. Now we need to find the area of these two bases to get the total surface area. So I have my 96 that I've already calculated, but I need to find the area of my base before I can plug it into my formula. And that's a right triangle right here. So we know that it is 1 half times 3 times 4 which gives me an area of 6 square units. So I can plug that in my formula now. 96 plus 2 times 6. So 96 plus 12 
so that gives me 108 units squared for my surface area. We're now going to calculate the surface area of a cylinder and we can use the same formula. We know that the lateral area then, we're going to need lateral area and lateral area is perimeter times height. So let's start by finding all the things we need for this lateral area. The perimeter of that circle is actually called circumference and we know that that's d times pi. So that is going to be 12, I'm sorry, diameter is, is not 12, it's 8. So 8 pi is our our perimeter and I'm going to just leave pi in, in that symbolic form um, and we know the height of this is 12. So now I can go ahead and put that in there, 12 times 8 times pi. So I know my lateral area is 96 pi. Then the area of my base, we know the formula for a circle, the area of a circle is pi r squared. So uh, my radius of this is going to be 4. So I'm going to go 4 squared times pi. So that equals 16 pi. So now I have all the things that I need in order to find my surface area. I have my lateral area and I have my area, my base. So surface area is going to equal my lateral area, which was 96 pi, plus 2 times the area of my base, which was 16 pi, still leaving the pi in its symbolic form. That's its exact value. So 96 pi plus 32 pi. Notice I still haven't needed to go to my calculator. And now I can go ahead and add these two, get two together, and that's 128 pi. This is an exact value. Now if I wanted to go ahead and get an approximate, I could calculate pi. So when I calculate the approximate value of 128 times pi, I get 402 point one two and then this the unit on this is centimeters so it'd be centimeters squared. Don't forget that centimeters squared up here. So that's how we go about finding the surface area of both prisms and cylinders. I have one more example for you to try before I, I send you on your own to try a problem. Here, instead of finding an actual value for our height or for our surface area of our prism, this time I want, we're actually going to come up with an expression because everything is in terms of variables. So we still go ahead and, and calculate as before, but just we're just not going to find a numeric value. We're going to have va um, variables involved. So my perimeter, I'm just going to kind of draw in that base because we know it's a square base. So perimeter then is going to be 4s, our height is going to be h, so that it means our lateral area is going to be 4 times s times h, and then the area of our base is going to be s times s, which equals s squared. So now I can go ahead and plug those values over here. So surface area is equal to 4sh plus 2 times my area of my base, which is s squared. And that's as far as I can go with that. I cannot simplify any further. And this would be units squared. Okay, the next problem I actually would like you to try on your own. I'm going to get you set up for it, but then I'd like you to try and, and solve the problem that's yourself. This is a cylindrical storage tank for gasoline. It's going to be painted with aluminum paint. Each bucket of paint covers about 110 square meters. The diameter of the tank is 8 meters and its height is 6 meters. How many buckets of paint will be needed? So it says the exterior of the sides and the top. So we want our surface area, which we know is lateral area plus 2B. But it only says I want the top, so I only need 1B. 
Now I know we don't write one in front of it, but just for our visual purposes here, I put that in. I'm also going to draw the cylinder for you. We know that it has a diameter of 8. kind of reminds me of the cylinder we just had in our last problem. And it has a height of 6. We, are, we know we're going to have to paint it, and each paint bucket covers 110 square meters. So I'd like you to stop the video at this time, try to solve the sur find the surface area of this cylindrical storage tank, just the top, you don't need the bottom, and then figure out how much paint would be needed. Start up the video when you're, when you're ready. Okay, so we found the perimeter to be d times pi, so a times pi. Height was 6, so per, um, lateral area would be perimeter times height, which would be 8 times 6 times pi, so 48 pi. The area of the base, remember, is pi r squared, so that's 4 squared times pi, so 16 pi. Go ahead and include that in my surface area formula. Remember, only one base this time because we weren't painting the bottom. So 48 pi, pi plus 16 pi would give me 64 pi. So when I calculate the approximate value of that, that's 201.1 centimeters squared. But I need one bucket covers 110 square meters. I'm sorry, I wrote centimeters squared. I should have written meters squared. So here, if we take 201.1 divided by 110, we get 1.82. So we don't have by a partial bucket, uh, so we're going to need two buckets of paint. This concludes Lesson 9-9. Nine, nine.